seven times. Seven, seven, seven times. times. Are you as crazy as Carol said? <laughs> well, it was research for a book. I probably, as you know, to help my son, may have taken it one time. I did get obsessed as a grown up. It's fun. It's like puzzles. It's like Sudoku or crossword puzzles. It's a lot more than that. Come on. Yeah. This is time consuming. You know what? Um, go back and try it now as a grown up. It really is how fun. Did, how did you do the first time around? Okay, the first out of the seven. Yeah. Uh, I did. I got uh, eighteen hundred. About out of out of twenty four hundred exactly because it used so to room be so for it, it room for improvement and I did improve three hundred and thirty points and my son thankfully uh, used everything I learned and improved five hundred and ninety points. The College Board incidentally says the average score gain is five to twenty after test prep. So I mean, so you could one might say as somebody who's had my. <laughs> My own two sons have just gone through this or in college now. I would never, ever think of taking the SAT right. to help them out. Are you a helicopter mom? Are you, <laughs> right. uh, I mean, are you, you know, all over them? Is this unhealthy in any way? Right. You know, I, here it is. I think all kids are different and all kids have different needs. I do think that um, sidling up next to your kid is very different than hovering above and managing above. And it's, um, I think I took pressure off of him by doing things with him. It was not actually the first time we had done work together. My daughter is a very different kettle of fish. She's much more self-directed. Um, she has, you know, he was developmentally immature. He was a young, young for his grade. He didn't mm -hmm. have any sense of um, what the consequences and opportunities of this test would be. But and it one, changed him. But one of the reasons that you undertook this incredible project yeah. was to try to get him to flip the switch on his own sort of enlightenment about yeah. the need of the importance of this test. Yeah, and guess what? It worked. <laughs> it did. He um, learned how to goal set. He had beat his goal. I mean, before we went into this test, he was a kid who, if somebody did better than he did, he would say, they are smarter than me. And I would say, no, 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 they're, they worked harder than you. And he'd go, no, they're smarter than me. And this was a long-term project. It was a full school year. And he, I think he was surprised that he beat his goal. And he took the lessons that he learned from this. It gave him confidence. And um, he is a self-motivated, much more directed kid. He ended high school with the highest grades and entered college with self-expectations that did not exist before we started the project. What are the lessons that other people can learn by reading your book and kind of apply to their own kids? Yeah, it's a really, it's a consumer reports for everything you would ever want to know about test prep. It's everything from um, how to maximize your test experience and take ownership of it, picking the t right test location, how to pick out good test prep from bad the right test food. prep. right food, I noticed you even I commented food, on the right exactly. food. And then Chocolate, it's also, water. Yeah, Listerine strips, Listerine apple. Listerine strips, that was a good one. <laughs> I tried it all. It's a survival kit. And exactly. But, you know, the other part of the book is that it's about motivating a teenager. You know, some kids are motivated and some are not. And I had a kid who was happy-go-lucky, and he was perfectly happy at the time, sliding by. We were not in a boom economy, and he was in jeopardy of, you know, possibly having a hard time, and I wanted to make sure he did his best and had all the opportunities. Debbie, what do you think about, you know, I, when I took them, and I'm not that old, but, you know, I didn't study a whole heck of a lot. It was a real true representation of what my body of knowledge was that right. I learned through school. Yeah. There is so much, billions of dollars spent on this test prep Four billion. industry. Right. 4.5 billion, yeah. What do you think? I feel like it's, you know, kind of legal academic steroids, all of this yeah. prep, prep that goes on. Is it really right? Does it really give institutions a snapshot of what an individual's kind of knowledge base. Okay, so I'm going to say that the test, how, whether you're test prepped or not, really is a snapshot of what you know at a moment in time, reading, writing, and math. Of, you know, you, you might know other things, but what you know, it's a snapshot. Um, there are really two kinds of test prep. There's strategy-based and there's foundation-based. Most test prep is strategy-based, which is why the average score gain is probably 5 to 20 points. Most students, including myself, need foundational work. So um, I think if you have foundational work, whether you pay for it or not, there's a lot of free um, access out there, it, it can be helpful. So now we're going to get an overhaul of the SAT. Right. Yeah. And part of that overhaul we hear is that there's going to be free test prep through the Khan Academy, potentially. Yep. What is that going to mean for, you know, the various 
test prep centers that are out there already, the Kaplans of the world. Right. I mean, what's your general take on this proposed overhaul, getting rid of the SA and, and other aspects of it? Is this going to be words. Is this right, right, getting right. To eliminate, eliminating tough words? Is that <laughs> yeah. a good thing or is well, that a bad thing? I, I mean, I don't actually believe. I think there's a lot of semantics. I mean, if you, he said we're going to get rid of you know arcane vocabulary, or obscure vocabulary. What and does yet, that mean, really? It, well, exactly, because the founding documents, if you look at the Constitution, if you look at the Declaration of Independence, it's laden with arcane vocabulary right, words, right. as is the New York Times. So what that really means is getting rid of the sentence completions, uh, but they may very well show up in the reading passages. Certainly more free test prep available to everyone. I can't see why that's not a wonderful thing, but you're still going to need a self-directed kid and a motivated kid to go on there and do it. Um, so I don't think, uh, traditionally, when they've changed the SAT, um, the test prep companies have actually it's been a good time for them. What was the toughest part of the test for uh, you? The endurance, you know, I did not, there was nothing in life that prepared me to have to focus for that long. You know, it's a four plus hour test, but you're really under duress for six plus hours by the time you get there and then by the time you leave. And no job or school prepared me to have to focus for that long, and it hurt. Would you ever have done this if you weren't writing this book? I mean... Uh, not seven times, probably. <laughs> and, you know, the truth is, taking back-to-back -back tests the way I did, and, and now I know and I see a lot of kids do it, it's not a good use of anybody's time or energy. You need more time than that, and it's just wearing.